So welcome to this Facebook Live tasting. So thanks to all the viewers from Saltwire, from my Body Glass Tasting Group. I'm sure there's some of our friends from the Canadian Association of Professional Sommeliers watching. So today we're going to talk through about some Mother's Day selections. My guest today is Brody Cook. He's the... Well, I don't even know what you are, Brody, but you are from Harvest Wines, and I know you're a highly qualified wine uh, personality in your own right. Uh, we've talked many times about wines. And so we're going to talk through about some of Brody's thought process of how he goes to create these little packs for Harvest Wines. We'll get inside Brody's head, maybe we'll taste a couple wines or two, and lead you through a tasting of wines they've selected for Mother's Day entertaining. So I guess the first question is, how do you, how, when you're coming up with the tasting pack, what's your methodology? How do you, how do you decide what goes in there? Fantastic. Well, thanks for having me, Mark. Uh, I am very uh, lucky that I get to select some of the products for the Harvest hand-picked selections, so they come out monthly. Uh, one of my responsibilities there is choosing wines that match the occasion. So when we take one of these boxes, we want it to be themed to an event, to an occasion, to a time of the year, and we try and pick products that match best uh, whatever that occasion happens okay. to be. Oh, I think, well, we've got Mother's Day coming up, so it's a perfect time to talk about Mother's Day wine. And when I think about Mother's Day, well, you know, I think there's, you know, I like I like to celebrate all day long. So <laughs> I like you know whether it's brunch, lunch, afternoon charcuterie, evening meal. You know I think it's a full day celebration. And one of the packs you have is this rosé pack. Um, maybe just tell me quickly about the three wines we have in the pack. Absolutely. So uh, who doesn't like getting your mother a bunch of roses, right? That was kind of a, the play there. Uh, I am full of bad puns, so you will get used to that uh, the more that you speak to me. Uh, we picked out three of our fantastic rosés that we sell uh, by the bottle. So we have from uh, the south of France, a beautiful little Provence-style rosé. So typically very dry, uh, delicious, very refreshing. Uh, and what we get out of this is instead of being from Provence and being uh, having the kind of the weight of the price that you spend to buy from Provence, you actually get it at a really good uh, deal. So it's a fantastic little wine. Mm -hmm. Uh, we then moved over into Spain uh, and grabbed a, a fantastic little rosé from there. So uh, not as dry as what you get out of the French style. Um, still very, very approachable, very refreshing, great to drink uh, in the sunshine, which hopefully we're going to be sharing with mom this Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> Fingers uh, crossed. And then uh, moved to South America. Uh, I went to one of our favorite producers down there who have quite an interesting uh, rosé from the Melbourne grape. Yeah, so, perfect. Uh, a little bit more white and body. Based. And I, I love that that you actually can see that there's not only uh, we have some different countries that play here, but you can tell just by the color of the styles range. So from this kind of more vibrant color to to this Provence color, which is you know, and maybe people that, that maybe are unfamiliar with the wine styles of Provence, you know, the rosés that they are tend to be drier, less pigment. Um, this wine's made from Grenache, Cinso, and Syrah, but look how pale it is. So I think, uh, anyway, I think uh, it's a great style. It's very trendy style. You know, the world loves this style. And so to be able to get a great value one is also really exciting. So let's talk about this wine and what we're going to have with it, or what we're going to cook up for mom on Mother's Day with this. Absolutely. So I love how refreshing it is. That's the first thought that comes to mind when I have this rosé, is that it is refreshing and crisp uh, and is just uh, delightful to sit and sip either by itself or pair with some food. Yeah, I think, you know, like, I think this is going to be, you know, it's dr on the dry side but without being aggressively dry. That's what I really like about it. Like, so it's fresh, it's clean, dry, but without being too acidic. Like, it's got a... So I could see, yeah, like this is a great kind of all day wine, you know, like cuisine for me. Um, yeah, I think with that charcuterie board too, perfect. This is a, a great little wine. And and the fact that it's less expensive than the Provence wines, which can be 20, 25, 30, um, it's a great deal. So anyway, I think that's a one what mom Cheers. should uh, enjoy. Dad might enjoy a sip or two if, she, if he's lucky. <laughs> Mm. 
and we'll wash some more of that down later. But in the meantime, let's talk about the red wine. So we have a, a six pack, but we just selected three to taste with you today. So we got three styles represented here. So I'm going to pick a bottle of, of from Lisbon area. So um, if you want to talk about it, uh, I find I think the wines of Lisbon are showing exceptional value these days. You know, very classic wine region. Um, many of the old vineyards got absorbed by Lisbon, but we're seeing this modern trend of great wines emerging just from the suburbs around Lisbon and seeing them put back in bottle. And it's it's amazing to see the amount of energy and appreciation. I certainly have a lot of appreciation for these wines coming out of Portugal. Anybody watches or reads my articles knows I uh, have a thing for Portuguese wine. I like to go there. I'll be back there in a month or two or less and uh, and hopefully having some great wines like this. Well, I struggle with the bottle because, you know, I'm 14 years out of working in a restaurant as a sommelier. Uh, let's why don't you talk about a little bit about this one because you're quite familiar with it. Yes, fantastic. So this is the Fat Duck uh, Red Blend out of Lisbon, as Mark said. It is a wonderful little wine. Excellent value. We love buying wine from Portugal because it represents to the consumer uh, a really cost-effective method of drinking great wine. Uh, so what we get out of this is uh, a bunch of structure and body. Um, you can see how beautiful the color is once it gets into a glass. It's, abs it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, there's really a lot going on with it, so it's not super simple, but it is delicious. And really, you want to enjoy your wine. Ultimately, mm -hmm. that's the goal. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of oak on the nose, like we find, you know, so... I, but it's got a great fruit concentration. Oh, yeah. If you like good fruit, is it. Nice and sitting in the background. Wow. Uh, good body, but um, nice cleansing acidity, too. That's a... Uh, that's a really versatile wine. That wine you can have with a whole whack of different things. Um, my culinary mind is just going all over the place right now. I am in. I'm in. I'm thinking duck. I'm thinking all sorts of different things. Uh, but doesn't have to be as exotic as duck. Um, so, you know. Oh, pork, chicken. I mean, there's so many things you could have with this. So, anyway, I think this bottle is going home with me later tonight, <laughs> uh, just to say. So, uh, a, a really great wine. Uh, you won't see the grapes listed on the label very often. A lot of indigenous grape varieties in the Lisbon era, grapes like Castellau or used to be known as Parakeeta and a lot of other regional grapes. Um, some new grapes too, like Syrah and Cab and Merlot, but uh, wow, great value wine. I think mom would be very happy with it that in our box tab two <laughs> great part okay so what's what else are we having today san giovese i think so all right delicious now brody is not a, he doesn't drink quite as fast as me but he's trying to get <laughs> up there <laughs> i'm learning Tw i have gray hair brody doesn't yet so that's called 20 years of being professional <laughs> anyway, okay, so San Diego's a, uh, a grape we associate with Tuscany, Emilia Romagna in central Italy. Now, you guys have selected, I know you have another couple in the store that I know the store when I go walk into uh, some of your, the um, uh, retailers uh, that uh, they, you know, the, uh, introduced me some, to some Puglian uh, San Giovese. So, Tell me about this wine, because it's a little different, you know, it's not a classic grape that we associate with Tuscany, but it's not from Tuscany. No, so from further south in Italy, um, what I really like about this is, again, I'm always looking for depth of flavor and enjoyment of consumption. Uh, I want to enjoy what I'm drinking, and I want those that are drinking it to enjoy it as well. So I really look for that added kind of boost of flavor, slightly mm. darker fruit notes, and what I like, I love, you know, like this wine has nice freshness in the back end. So I think, you know, when we talk about wines of Puglia, they tend to be a little more robust and, uh, you know, in the old days, quite rustic. And But this wine, I was, I thought, oh, is it going to become a little cooked? You know, sometimes when the fruit gets a little ripe, we talk about cooked fruit, but this is really pretty on the nose. Like, yeah, I love this one. So 
Like, I mean, I don't know if it's even getting some of that, like, floral violet stuff that we think of Sangiovese getting, but it's a great fragrance off the nose. Mm. And great acidity. And I think it, I don't know if you say, but it still retains its Italianness. Very much so. And you know? Pairing that with any kind of Italian fare uh, just makes perfect sense. Yeah, super, so. It's super easy to go with your charcuterie platter from earlier. Mm. Uh, or to to make up a nice red sauce pasta. Yeah, I, exactly. So I think uh, exactly what a what a great little wine this would be to 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 cook for your wife or your mother and say, break this wine out, crack, go into some great classic Italian cuisine. You know, start off with some charcuterie, but then move into like a hearty uh, like a hearty pasta dish. And I think you've got a perfect pairing. So I think mom would be pretty happy if you had this wine. A little charcuterie and then something, you know, bolognese, a hearty, a hearty Puglian pasta dish too with like, you know, olives and sausage and capers and tomatoes. I, I might have to leave soon and make some food, dinner. But anyway, I want to thank everybody and specifically Brody from Harvest Wines because I've really been getting to learn the wine selection from Harvest Wines recently. Um, starting to see how they infuse value and think about the consumer and, and deliver on some really great selections. And I'm excited to have a box uh, and, uh, you know, open up some wine for the mothers in my life. And uh, I can't wait to cook with them. So I'm really, thank you, Brody, for joining us. I hope you enjoyed kind of just tasting through these wines. Um, if you have questions, uh, they have great staff here. And don't forget to order wines from harvestwines.ca. You can, they'll deliver anywhere in Nova Scotia. Isn't that exciting? Very. Thank you so much for having me, Mike. Okay. This was wonderful. Cheers. Uh, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this glass of wine. Now. Awesome. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers.